Hey, what's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an awesome opportunity I had to go out and drive a red dot buggy for a day out on the trails in Sand Hollow. Now, if that experience alone wasn't enough, I decided to go ahead and invite my brother from Austin's Off-Road Garage YouTube channel. He came on down and filled the passenger seat while we were out there on the trails. This is his first day out in a real buggy, and uh, we broke him in right. We went out and ran some wild stuff. So, myself as a driver, I have had the opportunity to drive a few different buggies. I've driven a couple of the Fabin 801 cars. I've also driven Pretty Penny, as well as one other JHF uh, moon buggy car. I've driven Jeff Kleiben's custom built car, but I've never had the opportunity to go out and run a full day of trails with our friends and kind of see how I could hang with everybody out there on the rocks. Now, I did end up getting spotted on the serious obstacles, pretty much on most major ones. However, it's not my car, and I'm not that worried that uh, I did end up getting spotted. Maybe in the future I'll try to avoid that a little bit more, but my main concern here was taking care of the car and making sure this one got back on the trailer in one piece. Now, as we're taking a look here, this is our friend Matt, who met us out on the trail. He brought his little boy, Jesse, out there. Shout out to Jesse. He's been driving his Axial Capra and watching my RC videos, and uh, he's an awesome, rad dude, and it was super fun to be out on the trail with these guys. You can see Matt here hitting an optional line out here on Arrowhead Trail. Quick breakdown on Arrowhead Trail. It is a 10 rated trail. It's essentially a riverbed out in Sand Hollow with a bunch of awesome uh, unique sandstone formations that are caused by basically water running across it. You're essentially crawling up a bunch of waterfalls as you go down here. King Crack is off to the left side of the trail and it takes you quite a ways up, about 30 to 40 feet off of the bottom of the trail, and it is epic. The unfortunate part is that if you slip in during driving up of King Crack, there's really no good way to recover you, and uh, you're gonna have to drag your car out of the crack if it's possible to even get a winch line on you. So it's high risk, however, Overall, the obstacle, the main crack, isn't that technical. It's mostly straight, smooth walls. Uh, it's just intimidating because it's tall and big. You can see Matt doing an excellent job getting up and over at that point. Now, the funny part is this is my first time ever even riding in this car, let alone driving it. So I decided, you know what? I have the opportunity here. I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. So big risk line and on Arrowhead, this is really like the third obstacle on the trail. And I went ahead and sent it on up into the crack. Now I did ask explicit permission of Mike, the owner of the car, and he basically told me I can drive up whatever I feel like driving up today. So I was super excited about that, but I also made sure to have him just keep an eye on what was going on, and if I was about to do something stupid, go ahead and stop me from doing that. You can see him up here, but uh, honestly, until I get to the top, I didn't hear a word from Mike. He may have said some things, but I didn't hear it. But uh, overall, I feel like I did decent on this. You can see my front tires, and uh, basically, the more they disappear, the more the car is articulated. The key on any crack is to keep your axles level, and I felt like I did that on the way up through the crack. So the main part, about halfway up, I just had to tell myself, don't worry about what's behind you, just keep moving forward and having fun. Now the main crack on King Crack is the most intimidating part, but probably the most technical driving aspect is actually after you're out of that main crack, after you drop out of it, you've got a big waterfall climb to get up to the final exit. The exit basically has three options as of now, and uh, I ended up going out the left side, which this is where I don't have the experience, is big steep walls where the tires are actually starting to spin on the cars. Basically everything I've driven previous to this, I've pretty much had the traction where I've wanted it, and uh, I've very limited times have actually slipped a tire in a crawler. But this day we went out and we were able to get this thing on hard enough lines to where the car is really starting to work for it, and me as a driver, I have to figure out the line, find the traction to get up and over these obstacles. 
This one right here, Mike pointed out the line where a bunch of traction was over on the driver's side. He said most people try and end up towards the passenger. He says the key is to end up over on the driver. So thanks to Mike for that tip there. Now this one, again, I have some spotting going on here, but it's a big wall. Everything is bigger than it looks like on camera, right? So get my front end up there. Now the scary part on this one is that once you start to get some traction and climb up the wall, then you have to move your rear closer to the ledge off the driver's side, which is what you do not want to do. Like as a driver, you feel like that's not where you should go. However, with Mike's expert experience and spotting, I knew that I could trust him and that's where I put the car. King Crack went awesome, moving our way down the trail, hitting some more fun obstacles, playing with different features on the car like front dig and whatnot to get through these obstacles. There is a 10 year old driver and that is Coulter and he's going to spot me through this next obstacle as I drive the red dot. Let's take a listen and see how Coulter does for me. All right, Coulter, tell me what to do, dude. Well, as you can see, Coulter got me through there just about perfect, and I've got to give him full credit where it's due. He has way more driving experience in these cars than I do, but I do have some spotting experience, and looking at that video, he nailed it. So thank you very much, Coulter. I greatly appreciate it. Again, guys, he is 10 years old, has way more seat time than I do. Be sure to keep an eye out for this awesome upcoming driver. He's going to be competing in future events, and he is awesome out there on the trail. Thanks so much, Coulter. You're tearing it up, dude. Keep killing it out there in your buggy. This is Coulter's green car here. It is a Sasquatch Motorsports chassis. And I followed Coulter for the majority of the day. And truthfully, as we were on obstacles, he would get in there, hit the line perfect, wouldn't slip a tire and would drive on through. And then I would come up and struggle on it and spin tires and have to figure it out. So like all day long, I could see just how awesome of a driver he really is. So he's out there killing it and I aspire to be like Coulter, as funny as that may sound. Here we are, we've got my brother in the passenger seat of the Red Dot. We are now on the trail called Shotgun. This is kind of the trail that leads you out and away from Arrowhead. You can see we're getting pretty steep here and I'm just trying to find the line up top here. 
Austin doing an awesome job riding along in the car. He was uh, pointing out different things as we were driving along. It was pretty funny. We'd be going down some big steep descents and uh, those seemed to make him a little bit nervous, which is always fun when uh, your passenger's like, oh shit, dude, we're going down a big old wall. And I'm kind of like, well, that's really where we're going to have to go to keep up with these guys. But overall, did awesome and uh, wouldn't have wanted anybody else in the passenger seat. Thanks, for, thanks so much for coming down, Austin. I really appreciate it, dude. Here we're taking a look at a bonus line out here on Shotgun and we're looking at Mike Brassanini get in there in his new Iron Man car. This is the reason that I'm actually driving the Red Dot as Mike is getting more practice out here in his portal car. He may be using it in upcoming competitions as well as he just needs seat time in this thing. Mike was the first person to drive through this obstacle ever and uh, it is a wild one. You've got a 40 foot deep trench just off the driver's side and you're going up a steep technical V-notch. There's no room for error here, and uh, you definitely gotta know what you're doing to go through here. Obviously, I could have probably asked him to drive the car through there if I wanted, and I don't think he would have stopped me. However, I decided to go ahead and give a pass on this one. But you can see just how well he puts his tires right where he needs them. And uh, man, big props to Mike on this one. This is a scary climb, even just to watch, but uh, nails it. Absolutely perfect line through here. Way to go, Mike. And thank you very much for letting me take out the red dot. I, I think he has an idea of how much it means to me, but truthfully, it's a bucket list thing for me. And I was super excited. I'm still stoked. And this is a week later. Here we are further down the shotgun trail. This is a fun one. You drop down a hill into a V crack and uh, using some use of front only to try and get my front end to bring it up but I've also got to stay balanced and uh, there's a few times where I have to take a small reverse here or there or uh, switch from four wheel drive to front only to recover one of my tires. Basically this car just has so much articulation. I end up losing that front passenger in the bottom of the crack and uh, have to work to get it back up and balanced. Now because Sand Hollow is open OHV, it means you can choose the lines where you want out on the rocks. This one, I decided to go up the right side of this big boulder. There is a line to the left, but I know that it is a line where you have to bump up it to get your fronts planted. And uh, just with my inexperience, I don't really want to be bumping most things today if I can avoid it. So I choose this line and try and crawl it. This is a pretty cool one for me because I use some things that I've learned explicitly from RC crawling. And one of the things I've learned is that on a breakover like this, I'm trying to turn left to get a hook on a rock up here, but in a second, you're gonna see me straighten my tires. And when you notice, as I straighten the tires, it will move the car further up the obstacle. And that is because the tires, when I turn them sharp driver, are not as tall off of the ground. Your axle sits closer to the ground, but as you straighten it, it actually picks the front end up and gives you more clearance as you go. Now, credit to Mike here, as he was watching me chew away at this, he reminded me to let my front winch back out as I had winched it in just a little bit on that steep climb. As soon as I let that winch out just a little bit more, wiggled the front end around for some more traction, was able to get the rear worked up and right over the top of that. Super awesome and thanks to Mike for pointing out that uh, I forgot to let out the winch. So at this point we had made our way over to Master Link Trail. We drove down Chain Reaction backwards about half the trail and here we are right on the entrance. We're taking a look at Mike work his way up and out the entrance on this one. Basically he gets in here and side hills it, winches his car down to the ground as much as he can to clear his roof from that rock on the left side and cruises on through. I had to follow the same line but we're going to go ahead and skip my attempt at it as we move our way down the trail. This trail is super awesome and is a very technical, fun, difficult trail. And the reason is you have to stay balanced on these walls for basically a half mile. Now there are three major obstacles at the end of this trail that really set it off. Unfortunately, in my inexperience, I ended up uh, bending one of the transfer case levers that would uh, disengage my rear to allow me to do front wheel drive only. I cracked the bottom of the weld on that 
And uh, unfortunately, without front only, I just didn't feel confident in going into those last obstacles. So uh, I took the bypass on those, and now I am running all this trail locked in four-wheel drive. Unless, of course, as you can see in this clip, as I come off this hill, I put it in rear wheel drive only, use the rear steer, and slide the rear of the car around. That's super fun to play with different things like that in these cars and just see what you can make happen and how to maneuver them in different ways. This is towards the top of Broken Chain. Now we can see our friend John Hemble has met up with us and is out here running the trail with us. John sat here and watched me struggle on this one with a smile on his face, but overall I think he was just keeping an eye on the rookie and making sure that I didn't do anything stupid. So thanks for being out there on the trail with us, John. Always a good time to be hanging out with John Hemble out on the hard lines. Now this line is the entrance to the final exit wall on Broken Chain. And I sat here and tried to crawl it for quite a long time, even with spotters, unfortunately unable to crawl it. Finally, I just had to shoot up the wall. But this wall in particular is the one I struggled on most with all day out there rock crawling. And that's pretty much just because the car didn't want to finesse crawl it. It really just wanted to bump up to the top, get the fronts over the top, and then it was able to easily pull the rears up and over as well. But we're going to see the exit wall on Broken Chain. Again, another obstacle I never thought that I'd get the opportunity to try. I'm gonna leave this one raw audio. I hope you guys enjoy this. Be sure to listen to Mike as he spots me through it. What an awesome time out on the trail with these guys. Again, had such a killer time, such a once in a lifetime experience. I just can't express how much fun I had. And I definitely look forward to trying to get a buggy of my own in the future. I'm just trying to plan it out and make sure that I get the correct car for me at the time. You know what I mean? I don't want to half-ass it, I want to get a legit car. And speaking of legit cars, these red dots are just works of art. And uh, they were made by Kevin Carroll, who has actually passed away now and uh, there are a limited number of them out there. So the chance to get in a world-class crawler like this, that is just built like a sledgehammer. It's got the best axles available. It's got a crate engine LS3 in it. These things are just absolute hammers on the trail and you can really push them extremely hard and they just take it and chew it up. So it's awesome to get the chance not only to ride in this thing, but the first time I ever been in the car was to drive it all day long. Man, so cool. Thank you very much, Mike. I, I can't say thanks enough, man. But here we are, we are driving down Nasty Half Trail. I've never driven up the trail, but hey, here we are. We're driving down it for my first time. <laughs> uh, wouldn't have it any other way. But overall, guys, I've always kind of wondered if I would be able to hang with the guys out on the trails if I had a car capable of doing so. And I think overall what I've learned is that Yes, I've got some work to do, and of course there were times where I was spotted, but that's okay. I think that I've got the basics down. I do notice a few things that I'm doing in this video, like uh, I'm pretty choppy on the throttle as I watch this. I kind of gas brake, and I probably just need to drive through the brakes a little bit more as a driver. Now that's a pretty small thing, but uh, overall I had such a blast with this car out on the rocks. 
following Coulter around, as we can see. Look at him just jumping off of this 12-foot high wall straight down into a V-crack that he's got the front burn out of. Super technical maneuver, but does fantastic. Right there, his car is completely gone and mine is sitting just about level. And you know what? I have to follow him down this one, so it was a good time. Here we are, we are heading out of Nasty Half, which if you know Sand Hollow means that we're close to the tunnel and our awesome day out on the rocks is coming to an end. Again, I had a blast, it was super fun. It was a really cool opportunity to see for myself how I would do in a car on a lot of situations that uh, you know, you just don't get without actual seat time. So plenty of off-camber moments, climbs and descents and uh, trying to drive without knowing what's there, just driving by the feel of the car and that really only comes with experience. So the more chances that I get to drive these buggies, I usually try and take advantage of right there using rear wheel drive only and reverse with my rear steer pointed uphill. So I pulled the rear end of the car down there. Thanks to John Hemble for that little pointer there, driving out the V crack and just having a great time exiting this trail. One thing you will learn about these guys is even after a full day of wheeling, they are still hitting every bonus line they can on the way out. These guys live to wheel and it's been so awesome to be a part of this lifestyle here near Sand Hollow. This is cruising out the exit on the tunnel and there's plenty of tire marks on the wall so I decided to leave my own. As you can see Coulter cruising through there sideways, I believe he said this is the first time that he's done it was actually going through here. But if you look at his car, he's actually floating his, re his left rear tire through there. So he even knows how to feel out the car and just get it right to the point where the car is fully articulated, but he never goes too far. It never looks sketchy. He really nails the line through here, which is pretty funny. Headed out of the tunnel, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, yeah, it was such an awesome time out on the trail. I greatly appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks to all my viewers for helping make any of this possible. It really means a lot and uh, I have a ton of fun. I'm glad to share it with you guys and uh, I hope you enjoy the content. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever driven a buggy or which one is your favorite. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.